<laughs> Which one will it be, Batman? Bruce's love? Or the Dark Knight's junior partner? There is no way for me to save them or myself. This is all one giant death trap. Judges! I'm sorry, your answer must be in the form of a question, but thank you for playing. Wait. I have a riddle for you. For me. Really? <laughs> Tell me. I see without seeing. To me, darkness is as clear as daylight. What am I? Maybe you're just acting like a nigger, mate. Have you considered that? Do you think white people act like this? You, you act like white niggers. Exactly. Look, you carry on, but don't expect me to then have a debate with one of your faggots. I'm just not in the mood to deal with this kind of disrespect. And I know it sounds like, oh my God, he's demanding respect. But yeah, to be honest with you. Content policy and the decision to remove a creator page has absolutely nothing to do with politics and ideology and has everything to do with a concept called manifest observable behavior. We get rigorous and specific because we're talking about removing a person's income. And think of that in the same way for yourself. I mean, you might not be into big asses, but you happen to be really into big tits. So you just don't really care about the big ass, right? Imagine it like that and then think from the woman's perspective. Oh, hey there, guys. I was just cleaning my old dusty wireless keyboard with some compressed air I bought naturally at Walmart. You know what else is dusty? Your phallus. You know what else is compressed? Your, your blue balls. You're not getting laid, man. <laughs> nobody is. Literally, like, nobody is getting laid. If you're a man, like which one of your male friends is getting laid? Just give me fucking one name. It's just kind of one of those facts of life and you don't even need metaphors to convey this. And yet there are so many honeys, so many young honeys walking around in the mall, taking those little samplers from Chinese restaurants. And then they go to the bathroom. What are you doing? in the handicapped bathroom. That's too much space for you, babe. You're fucking uh, whatever the age you are. Well, what are you doing? That's too much space. Maybe there's a handicapped person who needs to use it. Why are you there? You don't have a baby. That's what's going on each day and every day. And all I have to say when it comes to this is holla, holla if you, if you feel me. Thankfully, there is somebody uh, uh, who's going to connect us with this world of pussy. <laughs> it's that fucking fat British nerd Sargon. He's going to be our fucking Moses, guiding us through the fucking desert with this shit. I mean, you think he was just moping around over there on his channel with the uh, Patreon shit. <laughs> no, man. It's in the past. It's kind of all the kind of white... Uh, well, let's just not even use that word. It's so redundant.
It's over, man. We're moving through, we're moving through to something that Sargon knows a lot about, and that's how to get women. <laughs> He's been fucking around the block, man. And he knows how to get the ladies. And he made a video uh, telling us how to do it. It's f so fucking nice of him. Motherfucker, like, you don't trust him. Fucking smell his finger. He has a lot of stank there from the opposite sex. So, uh, you know, he has a neck beard with gray hair, uh, which is another attribute that he cites as credentials for telling us how to get laid. <laughs> it's, the whole thing is fucking amazing. What advice will Sargon tell us about finding these elusive broads? Will he literally tell us to become um, firemen and policemen to get, to get women to just kind of go into that law enforcement field? To get the dames? Yeah, yeah, he actually will. Seriously, right? If you, if you really want to get a woman, become like a fireman or a policeman or something. And there's just a, a, lot, of other, a lot of other tricks he has up his sleeve. I tell you what, there is a lot that older men can teach younger men on this subject, and I wish that more would, to be honest. Like, there is a great deal of worldly wisdom that can really be, that really does need to be passed down, and I think that I have got the grey hairs now to say that I've acquired some of it. So I'm going to roll up my sleeves. Right, boys, let me tell you about women. <laughs> 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 Let me tell you about women. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so seriously though, it sucks if you're not good looking, right? I know this because I'm not good looking. I've not been good looking my whole life and there is a definitive and I think probably scientifically demonstrable advantage to being good looking. However, all is not lost, even if you are the guy on the left here and not the guy on the right. Fucking A man, exactly. Nothing is fucking lost for you, cause my dude, you're a fucking embryo. You've just been around for a fucking a couple of weeks, dude. You need to fucking relax. You're, you don't need a woman, you fucking live in the fucking uterus, dude. Just fucking chill out and listen to Sargon. Your head will, will really change, dude. You really have like a few more weeks to go. Because women are honestly not very visual creatures. Women respond to behavior, primarily beyond anything else. And you can see this because their favorite books are rape fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I, I don't buy these books. It's women that buy these books. What they're attracted to is masculinity itself. And clearly, guys, masculinity itself is a four-letter word, and that word is rape. And my friends, this is exactly why. When I went to college, my nickname was the Melatonin Cosby. And no, this isn't some sort of a racial reference. It just has to do with the fact that oftentimes a lady would say, Oh, I'm feeling kind of sleepy right now. And I would turn to her with a sly smile and say, guess who sneaked 10 milligrams of melatonin into your apple teeny? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here for the rape. I'm just here to sit quietly as you take your well-deserved organic nap. They're attracted to the, the physical act and the motions. The, the, the fact that they are being acted upon, in many ways, is the more attractive thing to a woman I have found. In my experience with dating women, I've, I've had a lot of girlfriends in my life because I'm quite old and I've only been married for a few years. More women than not would prefer a man to be manly, physical and active than be a soy boy, frankly, and a weak, passive male feminist. And I would also like to add to what Carl was saying by saying that a lot of women find the type of men unattractive, you know, the type of guys who call themselves the dollar store pterodactyls, who run through the do dollar store and making noises like, ah, 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 look at, look at the fucking two fucking door hangers I, I bought for one dollar at this dollar tree. It's the fucking, fucking dollar store fucking pterodactyls. Ah, ah, ah. 
women really find this a turnoff. And I find that these guys are about as common as fucking heterosexual men who actively identify themselves as male feminists. And I think that this is primarily the reason why male feminists uh, have real trouble getting girlfriends. Unless they're pretty boys, like the guy on the left and the guy on the right. But I mean, Elliot Roger was a pretty boy. And I bet his behavior was fucking passive. But it's fucking pathetic. So being a pretty boy is not like the, the way to be sure that you're not going to be an incel, clearly. It's not really about looks for women. It's really not. It's about how you behave. Now, like, a lot of the thing that makes you attractive to a woman is your career in many, t in many respects. Um, the fact that you do an important or dangerous job is often a turn on for a woman, even if you're not very good looking. You might have to lower your standards. You're not going to be going for the seven and eights, but you can still find women who will be attracted to you on the basis of what you are, not who you are. It's the thing that you do that the woman finds attractive. And I think that's probably the case why men tend to define themselves by what they do, by their careers, which honestly is one of the problems that I have being a YouTuber. No one knows what a fucking YouTuber is. You know, everyone thinks I do beauty vlogging or something. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> but um so yeah don't don't worry excessively about your looks honestly there are women out there who have a, a distinct fetish for sort of rough and unattractive looking guys they don't like pretty boys they find them to be effeminate because they're attractive um cultivate the ma your maleness and your masculinity Cultivate my maleness and masculinity. Think, thanks, Carl. You're the fucking authority on this. You're talking about this shit like it's fucking attributes and fucking Fallout 2 or some shit. Fucking cultivate your maleness and masculinity. What the fuck is up with that? You know, the thing about, like, uh, hyper-masculine men is that most women, I don't think, um, find them attractive because they know that they're fucked in the head. They're either, like, criminals or they're cops. And they chase each other in a kind of endless cycle of hypermasculinity. And it's like, this is one of the attributes of a civilized society that it fucking pushes hypermasculinity into the world of fiction, games, fucking dumb, endless fucking s superhero movies and all that shit. And now into the like YouTube comment section, like filled with different assholes. Basically, when there is no social mobility, hypermasculinity begins to emerge. That is to say, you can't assert yourself in an economic sense. You can now assert yourself with hypermasculinity. And you can see lack of social mobility in poor countries, whatever, in Russia in the 1990s, in poor neighborhoods, wherever that shit is, there's hypermasculinity. And now there is a, a group of men who aren't getting laid and who become fucking fixated with this fucking hypermasculinity and their guides and into this journey into fucking man manliness, into fucking being a total he-man, is, is fucking assholes like Jordan Peterson and a fucking fat nerd who calls himself fucking Sargon of Akkad, motherfucker. Like fucking World War II veterans didn't have to like fucking walk around proving their masculinity or anything. It's it's this kind of shit that we have to deal deal with. So fuck you, Carl. And uh, ladies, if you're attracted to hypermasculinity, you're gonna be fucked and uh, in the ass and almost literally and without consent. And it's just uh, dysfunctional men, dysfunctional women, kind of fucking. Are you looking at me? No, motherfucker. I'm looking at the fucking. Uh, I don't know. I'm just. I just. I just came to Home Depot. I don't know what's going on here. No, I'm not looking at you. That that type of shit. Everybody should fucking realize that if you persist with this kind of hypermasculinity past your late teens and early twenties in some kind of in intense way, then you're fucked in the head. You're you're a fucking cop. Is what I would say. You know. And you might think, well, okay, well, I'm I'm just skinny. Okay, well, stop being skinny. You know, it's it's something you can do something about. You know, and you might, I don't want to have to go to a gym. Well, stop being lazy. Don't necessarily go to the gym then. Get a job that's difficult. Get a job fucking lifting something. Get a, you know, do something. Actually do something. If you sit there stewing, then nothing will happen. But it is within your power to change how masculine you are. You know, don't worry about grooming yourself so much. 
Worry about being an interesting and dynamic person, someone who takes charge and has some initiative. And that in and of itself is something that women find attractive because they like they like the sort of action of the role, I think. I think it's the motion that men provide that women are attracted to, that kind of experience of having things happen that they can put trust and faith into is something that I think a lot of women are, are like attracted to. And, you know, I don't have any fucking studies for any of this. Like I said, this is just my experience as being a man who has dated a lot of women and is now married with children. So, like... And it's not like I started out as the best-looking guy in the world. Not like I am now, you know. And, and honestly, I think I probably do look better now than when I, I did when I was younger. But not by much. <laughs> like, by small amount, you know. Let's not be so humble, Carl, because, I mean, when you were younger, you really looked like some obese rodent on Thorazine. So, stop getting hung up on the looks. It's, it's not about your fucking looks, right? Get a... Seriously, right? If you, if you really want to get a woman... Become like a fireman or a policeman or something. And if you're like, well, I'm not, I'm skinny. Okay, gain weight, Build, bulk up. You've got to, you've got to, you can do that for yourself. And I tell you what, right? It won't take long before you start seeing the results. And when you start seeing the results, you will notice how much more confident you are. Just even, even by small degrees. Before you know it, you focusing on something else will draw women to you. Because the worst thing is to be desperate and chasing women. That is the prime turnoff for a woman. Because a woman, in my opinion, is probably, sub at least subconsciously, looking for... Looking for rape? Looking for rape that she's been reading so much about? Or maybe you, you know, have another kind of dumb cliche up your sleeve. The stable provider. You know, it sounds like a trope, doesn't it? But I think that is something that is kind of built into most women. Um, unless they've been brainwashed to become feminists, I suppose. Um, and so look like you can provide. You know, they, I think a lot of women take pride in the fact that men are successful. And, and why not, you know? And, and I'm not saying it's not the other way either, but to be honest with you, success seems to not be a factor in most men's decision on who they're with. You know, they seem to look for other things. This fucking life is not very gender equal <laughs> in many ways. You know. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to turn yourself <laughs> into the human incubator and then be stuck with a kid for the rest of your life, <laughs> it's nice to have a partner who has a job, <laughs> not at the arches. <laughs> <laughs> I know there are going to be people who whine and scream about it, but it's just true. Forget how you look, concentrate on what you're going to achieve. And on the journey, you don't have to watch out for women. Women will be watching you. They're all very aware about what the men around them are doing, where they're going in their lives and stuff like this. You know, and there will be women who will find something about you attractive, and it won't necessarily be the thing that you find unattractive. That might not be a, a particular factor in whether they care whether you're attractive or not. And think of that in the same way for yourself. I mean, you might not be into big asses, but you happen to be really into big tits, so you just don't really care about the big ass. Right? Imagine it like that, and then think from the woman's perspective. Big tits, big ass. You know, if we were into big tits all along, why even bring up the big ass to begin with? You would expect better sort of comparisons, better sort of examples from the student of John Locke. But nevertheless, like, you listen to Carl, and you really understand that this man knows when he, what he's talking about when it comes to uh, the ladies. I mean, this motherfucker, I mean, guess his body count. I mean, I've heard it's anywhere from one to four. And motherfucker, one of them was uh, a very vivid dream of Galadriel, uh, you know, Queen of the Elves, visiting him du during sleep. Um, and uh, this is something easy to dismiss, but you weren't there to experience it. So the fact that you're not that great looking, so what? You know, you make her feel safe and secure and, and loved and cherished or something, you know? So... That doesn't bother her, the fact that you're not that good looking, or you, you might even be in you know, a ugly or something. They don't, she doesn't care. What she cares about is this thing, but she has a different set of priorities to you. And I think the incels get hung up on this because they're male, because they are concerned about looks, and uh, you know, this, men are. But like, I, don't, I think most women just aren't, guys. So I don't think you need to worry about that at all. And I know that you sit there and go, well, I'll never look like a Chad, therefore there's no chance of me, there's no point in me improving myself and it's like well look 
you don't have to look like a chad to get girls man you know? so the big irony of this whole video is that throughout it it's like sargon is over there fucking cultivate your manliness fucking women want to provide her all these kind of tropes you know about fucking masculinity we fucking fucking he-man uh, fucking sargon of akkad motherfucker you know in the house teaching us with his fucking gray neck beard you know sitting us down and telling us what it means to be men and yet throughout this whole presentation he's like it's okay if you're not pretty you know fucking talking to a bunch of whiny bitches ah, my wrist my wrist is not fucking my you know my fucking shape of your fucking chin get the fuck out of here you're a bunch of fucking whiny bitches fucking hate incels now and uh we'll fucking hate them forever i have sympathy with men who don't get laid <laughs> motherfuckers <laughs> anyway <laughs> Anyway, it's been... Oh, well, fuck it. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. I don't want to do too much exhibitionism, but... I have sympathy, but not that much sympathy. Ultimately, there's nothing fucking wrong with being alone. It's just such a huge irony. It's like, it's okay if you're not pretty. You don't have to be pretty. He fucking has to reassure them. Again and again and again with this shit. Women are attracted to men who build things. You know, successful men. They don't always, have, you know, most of them are not chads, but they are really rich and successful, and that's something that attracts women. It's status. You'll be giving yourself status in society. Even ugly guys can have status. I mean, look at Harvey fucking Weinstein. He looks like a horror, and yet he <laughs> has status. And, you know, that he may have abused many women, but I bet there are many more women whom he didn't abuse who are willing to take advantage of his status. Well, my friends, that's the end of the lesson. I mean, in, in the kind of overall dirt of rape when it comes with to Harvey, there's still kind of pearls of insecure consent in order to advance their sad careers. And we shouldn't forget that. We shouldn't forget that as we enroll in the fucking police academy to score with babes. Kind of keep Harvey in mind. You know, keep him as an inspiration. It's one of the many lessons I've received here from Carl, uh, the ultimate YouTube authority on getting laid. I mean, how many fucking red pills? I mean, there's a few red pills left in this video, but uh, I can't, I can't, <laughs> it's enough, it's enough of this. So allow me to uh, ramble for a little bit myself, provide my own kind of gross generalizations of women, and uh, then we're gonna, we're gonna call it a day. When you look at our society today, there are in fact very few opportunities to actually connect with people, to connect with real people. And basically most of them happen in our youth. So you have high school and then you have college or whatever, and then you're basically done. Like the friends, the connections you've made at that point are the best connections there are because this was the time to socialize. After that, you're going into the workforce and there are no guarantees that the people you're going to be working with are ones you actually want to interact with. Everything gets awkward at the fucking workplace. And a lot of people just fall through the c cracks. They were socially isolated in, um, in high school and college. And now they're just kind of swimming in obscurity and social obscurity and in their own kind of alienation. And therefore connecting with people like, let's say online is literally the, the worst way of connecting to people. I mean, it can certainly work out, but basically you're subjecting yourself to the most kind of superficial judgments imaginable because you're just uh, marketing. You're basically just a shitty ad with a few fucking pictures. And as you grow older, uh, people get more and more specific in their preferences. People hear that TikTok of fucking father time. They get an increased sense of fatalism and they really become stingy with their affection stingy to their openness to others because you know it's time to fucking get on the bourgeois fucking hamster wheel and uh, fucking people are just not interested in experimenting as much and things like career and kind of these types of successes in life understandably understandably become more important and so you have a kind of a, a group of guys who are fucking wailing and bitching as a result of this and taking out all of their aggression on women. But they really have to ask themselves, since uh, high school, how many male friends have you really made? Since high school or college or whatever. 
And for most of these guys, the answer is next to none. I mean, it is hypothetically possible for a guy to have a rich social life with their with his male buds, but being unable to connect with a woman. But these uh, these men are rare. Chances are, like these isolated fucking incels, they don't have any fucking uh, social life whatsoever. But it, but the heart wants a young honey, right? There is a kind of a, a tender a, a, a tender horniness there that's not directed at at men and so there's no resentment of like how men choose their friendships like you'll never hear anybody bitching about how men are unfair in their friendships even though i'm sure that there are a lot of superficial standards that apply there as well realistically speaking uh who can become friends with who and uh, whatever i mean you have to fucking have social skills there as well and these motherfuckers are just bitching and whining and everybody is fucking babying with them. So when it comes to kind of broad generalizations of women, now the ladies watching this right now are very individualistic, very cool and hard to define. But if we're talking about crude generalizations, I think that uh, men, women are attracted to brands when seeking a partner, uh, to social brands more so than men. And so what I mean by brands is kind of like, well, crudely speaking, like a jock or a hipster, but it doesn't even have to be so explicit. It could be something like a middle class Midwestern guy, but there is a sense of conformity. Men who kind of are in socially desirable brands who live within the social rules of a desirable group, social group, then become more desirable than a guy who doesn't conform to them because he's socially inept or because he just doesn't fit in and this is a stereotype i'm not saying all women are like this but basically uh, there is a predictability to that brand you know whether it's like the high school jock or a fucking hipster socially mobile hipster or some sort of east coast liberal a fucking young professional wherever that is there is a stability to that brand within that community of people who conform to these social behaviors men are going to get laid more than some socially isolated of course dude or a dude who doesn't have the social skills to fucking wear tight pants like you're supposed to and then fucking say clever ironic shit like you're supposed to or whatever even like being just a kind of middle class fucking midwestern guy he can't conf conform to these kind of stereotypes and expectations and he's fucking less predictable and i think men stereotypically again this is a crude stereotype are attracted to lo looks and uh, uh whatever i mean not everybody and these are just kind of uh fucking something on my mind what's on my mind right now is it's like 6 21 in the morning so i really wanted to elaborate on this thing with the brands more but i think that this kind of brand shit is more important than hypergamy hypergamy implies in the way people use that term is that women are kind of social climbers and uh, want to kind of get the richest guy possible but uh, i find that to be incorrect i think that these kind of societal brands and the ability to make a living is there and the fact that many women conform with sort of gender stereotypical sort of societies and relationships doesn't mean that it's a biological fact i mean they've you know you grew up in a conservative region and the man is the provider and then the woman is gonna s fucking seek the provider naturally if there are fucking fewer opportunities for women but that doesn't necessarily mean that this is the same behavior would manifest in the same way with every woman you know depending on her fucking earnings or whatever the fuck but i think that that kind of conformity with brands conformity with a specific societal uh subgroup subcategory really benefits men in terms of getting laid in a way that it wouldn't f fucking benefit women because it's generally speaking not hard for a woman to get laid anyway i don't think i'm even making the contact with the camera there it is you know i'm i'm used to looking at the center but it's actually the fucking selfie camera is on the side still fucking going with my project of shooting on my selfie cam but i think i might abandon it it's getting kind of Maybe I won't. F fuck it. Who gives a shit? Anyway, my friends, yeah, been emo over the holidays. Uh, kind of unproductive. Had, like, some shitty bug. 
uh, really kind of became a cat. I actually turned into a cat and I slept for like 10 to 12 hours and uh, now beginning to emerge uh, from it and uh, hopefully will be more productive in my output. Uh, huh? Fucking if you're alone, dude, go to the fucking yoga studio. Go to any environment where females outnumber men and just hang out there. And maybe you will become friends with a girl and then you bang her f friend or whatever. I mean, it's just statistics. Like, go to a fucking Buddhist temple and a lot of ladies come there and they're open. Open to the Dharma, maybe open to your stupid fucking face and your thin wrists and your stupid fucking chin or whatever the fuck. Do you remember me? How can I forget? Dr. Burton tells me you know who Batman is. I can't tell you if you don't say please. Edward, please. Who is Batman? Maybe you're just acting like a nigga, mate. Have you considered that? Do you think white people act like this? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.